right, we're going to go ahead and put the hook in the vise. And we're using a short shank. This is a size 10 Montana Fly Company hook. And the reason for the short shank is we're going to do an extended body. So we're just going to start your thread, take it to the back, and then we're going to tie in the tail material, which this is going to be elk hair, just natural elk hair, nothing fancy about it. And you better get used to doing this step because if you're tying this fly, we're going to do this a couple of times, which is with your left hand, pull out all of those shorter fibers, take a little comb, get out the under fur, and then you're going to stack it. And this is just going to even up the tips of the elk hair. It's very hard to do this by hand. I know people will try, but... And we're looking for maybe a dozen materials for our tail. Maybe a little bit more than that, but... Then we're going to tie it in, just starting at the back of the hook, working our way forward. And I do kind of loose wraps, and then I go back over them with very tight wraps. And the idea behind that is it's going to hold it in place and on top of the hook. And then hold up all the butt ends of the hair and trim it off. Make sure you get all of them. And then just going to go up. I like to hit the hook shank and then go back on. So it's kind of like when you hit the hook shank, it just kind of glues everything in place. It doesn't allow it to roll as much. And this is going to be one of the annoying steps, which is kind of like creating a para post, but we're doing it on a tail rather than on a post material. Um, so it's, you use the same concept. Which is just holding it with one hand and then wrapping it with the other. I'm going to take some dubbing. This is super fine dry fly dubbing in March Brown coloration. And you could do this fly in a whole bunch of different color combos. You could do it yellow. And really, it's probably more similar to a stone fly than it is to a March Brown. But uh, here, you know, our March Browns are hatching right now as this video is being recorded. And I like a fly that floats heavy nymphs for the higher flows we usually have in the spring. So it kind of is like a two bird, one stone thing. Um, fish do come up and eat this thing pretty regularly. We had it happen just last week. Um, but the big thing is this fly can support a lot of weight, which means in our higher flows, you can fish it and fish a really heavy nymph. So we're just going to take that dubbing around the tail. Usually try and do two or three wraps and you're just making sure that your dubbing is tight and giving it a good taper all the way up. You can see I kind of got that segmentation. Um, that will not be uh, absolutely necessary, but um, it does work. So we're gonna take the elk hair natural, like what we used on the tail, a little bit of it and we're going to do the same steps, which is removing all the underfur. And I'm using a, about the same amount, maybe a little less than what we used on the tail. And that's just because this is what the fish are going to see. That's the color that they're going to see. And I, I really like it as being similar to a March Brown. So I take the tips to about the butt of the dubbing that I tied in. And I'm going to give it a couple of wraps pretty tight. And... Let's just go ahead and get that restarted. Now back at it, we're gonna take a tan deer belly hair. Now this is again, just to make this thing float like crazy. And this is essentially how people stack or make uh, bass bugs is you're stacking hair on top of hair, changing colors you know, changing how you tie it in. But we're just doing this on a dry fly. So same steps as you use with elk hair, which is removing the under fur and then you stack them and we're going to use a hair more of the deer hair belly because this stuff is going to launch straight up when we tie it in and it's going to make this fly super buoyant uh, and that's one of the things that gives it the good plop when it hits the water so we're doing three or four wraps just making sure everything is good and tight and i'm always pulling up those extra bits that are trying to roll to the underside of the hook so that should be on the far side of the hook that you're going to be just kind of pulling those, those hair bits back up. Now you could stop here, but I always go one step further, which is adding a, a hot spot or something that you can see. So we're going to use deer belly hair in yellow, and we're going to use just a small amount of it. This is something I've done for a long time. A lot of other people have done this for a long time too. 
but we're just going to place that right on top of the tan belly hair. And this is kind of like the, like I said earlier, getting you started for tying bass bugs because it's uh, essentially the same concept. I'm gonna hold it in place, do three or four good tight wraps, and then we're gonna hold it up, all of these fibers up, and I'm just kinda spread out my thread wraps just to make sure that everything is evenly taut or evenly uh, compressed, all of the different deer hairs. Because what'll happen is if you don't get, do this well enough, it'll actually cause all of them to roll, which is very annoying. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim this up. So basically all I did was just trim the butts off of the deer hair. And now we're going to add some legs. So this fly doesn't have hackle. It uses uh, these centipede legs. I really like these. They're the mini version, so they're super tiny. But they're, they're really durable, and I think they give a good... Um, lifelike action to the fly when the fly's in the water you can really see these things like spreading out and uh, march browns and other bigger insects definitely have large legs so um, it's a cool way to imitate that and there's enough deer hair on this thing to float it where it's not 100 percent mandatory for you to always have to use hackle um, and i like that because it also exposes the body of the fly so that the fish see that more now i'm going to just lift the thread and place the far side where I want it. So you've got one little, maybe a two inch section on each side of the hook. And I'm gonna give that three or four wraps. It doesn't take much to cinch this stuff down. It holds in place pretty well. And do another one, just kind of spreading out my wraps. Then we're gonna hold everything forward and we will whip finish. And if you go back to the beginning of this video, I did like a little two second blip of where the fly hits in the water and you can really see how exposed the body of this fly is. So if that's something that you'd like to see, then that's what I suggest you doing. But that's it. That is the finished fly. As soon as we trim up the legs and then we're good to fish it.